In 1972, something very special was happening. Lots of special things happened in 1972. It was really, really an amazing period of time, in fact. But as far as chess, what happened in 1972 is Bobby Fischer, American Grandmaster Bobby Fischer, actually his name is Robert James Fischer, we all called him Bobby, Bobby challenged the Soviet Grandmaster, who was also the world chess champion Boris Spassky, to a world championship match, and it lasted two months. That match lasted, if you think about a boxing match, that boxing match, heck, that could last five minutes, one minute, 20 minutes. But if you think about a basketball game, that lasts 60 minutes or a football game, that could last 60 minutes. But a world championship match lasted two months. And in those days, in 1972, basically everybody got their news and information. There was no computers, there was no internet, there were no cell phones. We got our news from the TV and from the newspaper. And every day uh, on the newspaper, they would give a report of what happened in game one, game two, game five, game 10, game 14, and so on. And I was in rapture. I loved to read what Bobby Fischer was doing and that's how I became interested in chess. Well, in 1972, there was a man, his name was Walter Cronkite. And Walter Cronkite read the evening news. And in my household, we would turn on the TV and we would watch that news report and Walter Cronkite was literally like a father to the nation as he gave the report and everybody watched the evening news with Walter Cronkite. And there was a lot of things going on. The President of the United States at the time was a guy by the name of Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon was being impeached. We, Watergate. We were at war in Vietnam. There was a war going on. Hip hop was just being coming out. Uh, do you guys know Bruce Lee in martial arts? Yeah, Bruce Lee was, was coming in, into fashion. So a lot of things would happen. And Walter Cronkite, I remember watching him. He would come on the evening news and he would say, good evening America, this is Walter Cronkite, CBS News. Today, and then he would go on and read what the news was. And that's what he did at this one show I was watching. He'd say, today's news, we have A, B, C, D, th all of these things. And then he would say, but now the really important news is let's figure out what happened between Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky. He stopped the evening news to focus on the World Championship chess match. Wow, that was so cool. Oh, I was so excited. Chess was front page news for two months. It was on the TV and PBS, how many of you know PBS, Public Broadcasting Station? PBS would have one hour shows every day. Shelby Lyman was the host of the show. And I would watch those shows as well. Okay, so I got really, really excited about chess. And I remember this. When I was a kid, I was 12, let me repeat myself. Oh, I was a good kid. My mom and dad, they loved me. Why? Because when it was time for me to go to bed, no problem. I went to bed. I love my sleep. If they said 7 o'clock bedtime, psh, I was right out there. They said 7.30 bedtime, no complaints. I went right to bed. My parents loved me because I loved my sleep. So we had no problem. Well, one day there was a party. I think a friend got married. So we went to a wedding and then there was a wedding reception and it just kept going on and on. And instead of seven, it was eight. Instead of eight, it was nine. Instead of nine, it was 10. And I really, really wanted to go to bed. We left the party at 11 at night, way past my bedtime. I was super, super tired. So finally we made it home and it was really late at night. 
And like most American parents, they, we got into the house, they turned on the lights, they turned on the TV. And I was going to my bedroom, and I remember very, very clearly, like it was yesterday, the TV was set to the Johnny Carson show. Well, he was a late night host, and he would interview important celebrities. And Johnny Carson came on and he said, and tonight we have a very special guest, the world chess champion, Bobby Fischer. So I was on my way to the bedroom and when I heard that, <laughs> I turned around, <laughs> I went back to watch the TV because I wanted to see Bobby Fischer. I discovered at the Seattle Public Library that Bobby Fischer had written a chess book. And that chess book was called Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess. How many of you have seen that book or know about it even? I think, I think, I'm not sure, I think there's a copy here at the St. Louis Chess Club Library. Okay, Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess. So I went to the public library, got my card, got my membership, and I checked the book out so I could read the book. And it was amazing. Bobby Fischer's book, Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess, talks about one tactic, 200 pages, the back rank chess mate. I said, my God, this guy's a world champion, but he's a one trick pony. All he knows is the back rank checkmate. But I figured if Bobby Fischer was the world champion and he wanted me to know what the back rank checkmate was, I better learn it. So today we're going to teach you the back rank checkmate. Now notice that white has obviously hit castled and white's last move was this move. Black had obviously castled, but let's try to understand what's going on in the situation. <clears throat> white has one, two, three, four, five pawns. Black has one, two, three, four pawns. So black reasons, holy cow, I'm a pawn behind. I gotta win that pawn back. Yes, Charlie? Rook takes d2. That's exactly right. Black reasons that this pawn, if he could capture this pawn, he would restore the material imbalance, and now it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We'd be in a completely symmetrical position. But black overlooks one thing. Yes, young man. That's precisely right. The rook on e1 goes to e8 as checkmate to the black king because black's beautiful pawn shield, right, that protects his king. Black's, black's pawn shield protects his king from a frontal attack. If this rook were here or here or here or here, black's king has no problems. But this attack comes along the rank, in this case, the back rank, the eighth rank, or from black's point of view, the first rank is the back rank. In this case, black's king is trapped by his own pawn shield. These loyal, loyal sentries, these bodyguards, are preventing the king's escape. The king cannot move towards the rook because the rook attacks that square. So black is in check and mate. That's so that is a primary example. That's a simple, simple example of a checkmate. Okay. Okay, so it's a very balanced position, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So six versus six in terms of pawns. And both sides have a pair of rooks. It's white to move. Now, we notice, the first thing we notice in the position is white's rook is on an open rank. White's rook is on an open rank. So when our rooks are on an open rank, the ideal is to come to the seventh rank so we can eat all of these pawns. In the Soviet Union, the seventh rank was called the refreshment stall. That's where the rooks would go to get a refreshment. 
They go to the seventh rank and they eat a pawn. So white begins with the move rook to e7, attacking black's pawn. Black really desperately wants to return, return the complement and get his rook to the seventh rank, but black sees a problem. Black sees that after this pawn is captured, black cannot capture this pawn because it's protected. So as tempted as black is to go to the second rank, he, black, first starts with the move rook c8, c7, a defensive move. Yes, young man. <laughs> You're getting close. You know what I'm about to introduce is black first plays this defensive move, rook c8 to guard his pawn, that white's last move threatened. Now white is very clever. Charlie. Rook e1. Correct. Rook a1 to e1. Now what this is called is a battery. So what a battery means is we double the power. We double the power behind. I know what double the power means. Okay, just. Like the, the, it can feel like if the rook captures the rook that is on, on E7, it's guarding. It's it, still guarding. That's right. And so it's on the same, like it, it's in the same column. Exactly. So white doubles rooks on the open oh, file. Yeah. Yeah. Now, black makes a decisive error, almost a suicide kind of move. What black should probably do is move a pawn in front of his king to give his king, uh, do you know the word Luft? Luft. Oh yeah, it's a German word. That's correct. Luft is a German word and it means air. So the German national airliner is called Lufthansa, as in airplane. Okay, so <clears throat> we say in chess that black could give his king Luft by moving a pawn in front of his king to escape the back rank checkmate. Yes, young man. You meant the Germany, yes. Oh. Yes, precisely. I on that light one. Okay, the, there you go. Lufthansa. Airplane. So black should make Luft for his king to give his king air to breathe so that he can avoid the back rank checkmate. Black, instead of making Luft, makes a terrible decision. No. A suicide decision. No. He moves his rook. Charlie. Rook e8 check. Rook e8 check. That is the best move. Rook e8 check because after rook e8 check, it's checkmate in one turn. After the rooks are traded, check mate. Now, yes, this is what Bobby Fisher would, would teach. Bobby Fisher also in his book. This is the best move by far because it's checkmate in two moves. There's no question. But could white capture this pawn as well? Charlie? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. We know that rook e8 is even better because our goal is to checkmate the opponent's king. All we need is one checkmate per game and we win every game. In this position, <coughs> white reasons that he could win a pawn because after rook takes it would also be checkmate. it would also be checkmate the rook would come down and checkmate black's king okay now let's set the table what's going on what's going on one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, six, equal number of pawns. White has a queen, black has a queen. 
Black has two rooks. White has two rooks. White has a battery on the E file. Black has a battery on the D file. Both kings, both kings do not have Luft, correct? Both kings do not have Luft. So in this position, it's White's turn to play. How could he checkmate his opponent? Young man in the back. Yeah, well, uh, what's it, what should White play? What's the best move for White? Our, Yes. So I would move um, pawn on d2. Yes. So you have um, two attacking that on rook, and then if you move, it would be a, you could take off the pawn on the dad's That's a very insightful comment. Thank you, young man. You made a very, very insightful comment. What the gentleman was saying was notice that this queen and this queen are on the same diagonal. If white could force a trade of queens, we don't know how he's going to do it. If white could force a trade of queens, there would be rook e8 and a back rank checkmate. So the young gentleman had a really clever idea. He thought this rook is in the way of the queen trade. So let's get rid of black's rook. Let's attack black's rook. And as soon as the black rook moved away, we could capture. And to show our genius, we would play. Rook e8, check. And after rook takes e8, <laughs> Charlie? Checkmate. So that move C4 was really good to attack the rook. But do you know what Michael Tall, a world champion from the 1960s, said? He said, if you see a good move, stop, think. Maybe there's a better one. Let's go back, back, back to our position. So this was our starting position, and the young gentleman, with his very, very insightful comment, suggested the move c4, attacking the rook with the idea that when the rook moves away, we'll trade queens. Well, what would happen if the rook moved here to d1? Should white capture the rook? No, why not? Why shouldn't white capture the rook? Because, because the black rook is going to capture it, and the, then it will be a checkmate. Rook take? Check. 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 And then it's not black who gets back rank checkmated. Oh no, it's white. So white could not capture the rook, correct? Yeah. So let's say instead white, cap white captured the queen. No. But now, the problem from Black's point of view, if he takes the queen, he'll lose the rook. But Black's very clever. Black says, well, <laughs> let me trade rooks first. Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes check, rook takes, and now rook takes queen. And after c4, we don't get the back rank checkmate that we wanted. It's like, oh man, darn it. Let's go back, back, back. OK. So c4, attacking the rook, would only work if black didn't find his only move. After this move, the position's about balanced. So we've got to find a better move than c4, even though c4 looked really, really, really attractive. Charlie. Brilliant. Bingo. Queen takes d5. Oh. oh, let's go back just for a second. White would love to play check. Mm. 
But after Rook takes, Rook takes, White very confident, confidently announces checkmate to his opponent. It's not checkmate because there's a queen blocking. Exactly. It's, but Black says, no, 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 no. It's not checkmate. My queen also defends the e8 square. Oh. White's frustrated and angry. He says, oh, I just lost a rook. Well, never mind. I I'll capture. And now what does Black do? Charlie? Queen one checkmate. Oh, no. <laughs> White is a, what we say, catastrophe. A catastrophe has fallen on White's shoulders. He's now the one being back rank checkmated. Oh, no, fair. I want my turn back. Now, we go back to this position, and White Charlie correctly reasoned that black, to defend his back rank checkmate, he needs both his queen and his rook defending the square. White captures the rook with his queen. Ah, this comes as a very big surprise to black. Black thought that rook was wonderfully defended not once, but twice. Now, no matter how the queen is captured, there's a problem. What happens if I capture with my queen? Charlie. Rook e8 check. Rook e8 check. Rook takes e8. Young man. Rook e8 checkmate. Checkmate. So it didn't matter. Look at this. Yeah. yeah it didn't matter that white gave up his queen for a rook because it was the rook that delivered the checkmate. Let's go back, 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 and let's say, wait a minute. <clears throat> let's go back to this position. Let's do that one again, because I'm not 100% sure that worked. Let's take queen takes d5, and let's imagine black this time doesn't take with his queen, it takes with his rook. Does it make a difference? Charlie? It doesn't make a difference because after a rook he check. Yes. The queen takes e8. That's force. That's the only move. I agree. Rook takes e8 checkmate. Again. And all of these checkmating patterns were shown in Bobby Fisher's book. Let me make it a little bit more complicated. First of all, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the pawns are even. Queen is on the board, queen and queen. Bishop and bishop. Rook and rook, rook and rook. So the material balance is even, OK? In this position, does black have Luft? Who thinks black has Luft? Who thinks that black doesn't have Luft? Oh, yeah, it has Luft. It has Luft. Because Bla it can move to that square. Right. Black has made Luft for his king. It's black to move. Black to move. Black is thinking over his turn, and he's putting it all together for himself. So black figures his rooks are in a battery, and he wants to capture this pawn. Black is a little bit reluctant to capture the pawn because in his mind, white had just played this move, queen c3, and black is fearful that this pawn will be captured. But black's logic is impeccable. Impeccable. Perfect. Black's logic is perfect. Black figures that if he captures this pawn, he will be attacking White's bishop. If White tries to capture this pawn, he'll be too late. Black will take the bishop, and Black will have a winning position. Young man. Well, why not the queen just take the rook? Ah, you're getting ahead of us. Bravo. So white, Black captures the, rook, the pawn with his rook, and he thinks 
he doesn't have to worry about the back rank checkmate because in Black's mind, he has made Luft to avoid the back rank checkmate. That was very clever. However, notice what does, does this bishop on d3 protects what square, young man? It protects the h7. 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 So that square that is Luft for the king turns out to be illusion. The king can't move there because this bishop protects that square. So white plays what, Charlie? Correct. This is a shock. Black is really, really shocked by this move. Queen takes d4 because Black says, but can I just take your queen? No, because then the rook would go up and check king. Charlie? No, because after the rook e8 check, queen takes e8, rook takes e8, checkmate. Because king h7 is illegal. That bishop, uh, that bishop protects the h7 square. Let's go back and let's do another one. Whoa. Another checkmate. Okay, so in this position we'll do another checkmate. A back rank checkmate. Uh, let's say, do, 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 uh, we're going to put a bishop on the board, and we're going to put another bishop on the board, and we're going to put a queen on the board, and a black rook. Okay. So far, so good. We need one more situation here. Okay. Let's try to understand what's going on in this position. This is one of our most complicated positions so far about the back rank checkmate. First of all, let's set the table. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So the pawns are even. White has a bishop, black has a bishop. So the bishops are even. One, two rooks, one, two rooks. So those guys are even. Uh, one queen, one queen. Okay. And yes, young man. And the kings are all even. And the kings are all even. So, what Black is kind of expecting is that more or less the game is even and that the game will be agreed a draw very shortly. Black reckons that White is just going to trade rooks. And then after a rook trade, another rook trade, a queen trade. Looks pretty even. Let's say the queen comes back and it looks like we'll end up making a draw. That is black. Black anticipates white just trading off all the rooks and everybody makes a draw and everybody's happy. White sees a move that gives him the opportunity for a back rank checkmate. What move does white play? Mm. Young man. Um, like, uh, like the bishop can move the piece to like to uh, G7. Yeah, that. So can like block the two squares so the king can't go anywhere. Yeah, well, after bishop takes g7 and d, that could be a capture. I'm not 100% sure, <coughs> pardon me, that it's a good sacrifice because black could take the bishop. <coughs> Instead, white has a different idea. He reasons, correctly, that this queen is vital. This queen has to protect this rook because otherwise the rook would make a back rank checkmate. So white reasons that he must attack the queen. Young man, do you know? No, sorry. Yes, young man. Queen to 
absolutely brilliant. Queen to d5. A few moves ago, uh, in a different position, last time we were taking rooks. We captured a rook and distracted a uh, black's queen. This time we don't take anything. We just bring our queen in the middle of the board and we just offer our queen for free. Can black capture white's queen? No. Young man, no. no. Then it will unprotect the rook. Correct. So that we would end up in our favorite pattern, the back rank checkmate. Yay. Yay. Now, let's say that black cannot capture white's queen. Where could black's queen go, young man? Um, black's queen could move to d8. Okay, queen d8. Okay, now let's think about what white's opportunity could be. What? Check. And then, and then the queen captures it, and then it captures it, and then that captures it. And the result is white has lost two rooks, but black has lost his rook and queen. So white's queen will dominate black's rook. Like white should get, white should make luft and just make sure that he doesn't get checkmated even though the bishop does protect the square, white would have a winning position. Let's go back. Let's go back for just a moment. And we get this position. White has just played, sorry, white has just played the move queen here. We just discovered that the queen dropping back wouldn't defend. What if Black took the rook. Then what were the gentleman in the back? Queen captures queen. Correct. Queen captures. And black says checkmate. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's not checkmate. But black says, I want to checkmate you. And you checkmate him. <laughs> exactly. Where? Queen d8? No. Queen d8. No. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. The bishop. Oh, queen e. Why not queen c8? Uh, because the rook. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is your only move, but it's checkmate. Okay, let's go back, back, back. So it's white to move. Young man. Queen to b7 is a good move. I like that move. But it doesn't really... Oh, rook takes, queen takes. Oh, that's tricky. Maybe, maybe black will have to move his rook off this file so that there's no more uh, back rank checkmates. Remember, we started here. So white put his queen on pre. He said, go ahead and capture my queen. I'll give you a back rank checkmate. Black said, no, I got to maintain the defense of this rook. I'll move my queen here. Charlie. Queen e5. Queen e5. Now that would be a good move because you're threatening checkmate. But what if he took our queen? Oh dear. Yeah, but we just lost a queen for a rook, and maybe black would make luft, and we would have no more checkmating threats. Young man. Um, instead, well, you have to go back first. Yeah, of course. And so when the queen moves there, yes. I would move my queen to a5. Queen to a5 is a very exciting move, because you're attacking black's queen, but what happened if the bishop... Ah, oh no! Oh no! Tragedy! Tragedy is, is struck. Where else could we move our queen? Young man. Hmm. Well, I was just thinking that if I 
This work, this square doesn't work. I'll go in the back. What square works? Queen A8. Well, that's very exciting. You are trying to take my rook, but if he takes our queen. Yeah, nothing happened. Okay, so what I'm looking for is a queen move in this position, a surprising queen move. Young man. That is a big surprise indeed because black definitely thought that that pawn was protected. So when he captures the queen, then, then the rooks can just form together to get the king. I'm not sure how they can form together to get the king. If you play check, he will just capture both your rooks. That king, that king has been merciless. That defending king has won a queen and a rook. We got to go back, back, back. Back, back, back. OK, how about this as a proposition move? Could white play this move? And it would be checkmate. Yeah. Correct. So queen c4 is a heck of a move. What happens if we go back and after this move, black takes the queen with the rook, not? Same, same thing with the queen takes. Correct. It would just be the rook trade, but, the, but there's no extra protection. So the queen just acts as another rook to lose, and checkmate happens again. Checkmate happens again. How cool is that? So checkmate happens again. So isn't this exciting? The white, I told you it was going to be a complicated lecture. So let's just do this again. So black is in this back rank checkmate situation. And white puts his queen in capture, not only to black's queen, but also to black's rook. And in both cases, the queen is immune. If you capture white's queen, you'll be checkmated. So black goes back very calmly, keeps his defense together. And now white has to figure out what can white do now. How could white's queen attack this pawn on g7, young man in the orange? Very good. Queen g4. Ooh. What does this move do? This move, again, it offers your queen for capture. Would this be good for black? It's checkmate, the back rank checkmate. Rook takes e8 as checkmate. Besides threatening to capture your queen, let's say the queen moves maintaining rook e8. Now what do we do? And gentlemen in the red. Um, queen to queen to queen to queen to Correct. Queen takes g7 check and mate because the queen is protected by your bishop. So let's say in this position black decides He's very clever. Black decides to play the move f5. The move f5 blocks the queen from capturing. The queen here defends ch against checkmate. Now what would you guys do? Charlie. Um, wait, what if I have a OK. What would you do? Um, yes? Move your rope to e8. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then Rook. And then, and then you would um, continue to capture it. Okay. And then, like, um, and then the queen captures it. And then, like, the, the, the checkmate. Yeah. And then you get the yeah. checkmate. Yeah. Checkmate. Ah. And, the is and protecting. Yeah. yeah. And 
and protecting this square and protecting the queen. So checkmate. So these back rank checkmating patterns, Bobby Fischer spent an entire book teaching his readers about the back rank checkmate and why it's so important. And I learned a lot of these checkmating patterns. And so what I, what I say and what Bobby Fischer said better is that be careful. Don't fall into a back rank checkmate. You can make Luft. And secondly, when your opponent's pawns are like this, keep it Keep an eye out. Maybe there's a back rank checkmate for you.